very important. So I want you guys right now to go ahead and open up the word. Let's open up the word of God. Let's go to Psalm, Psalm 11. If you would, please, we're going to read the whole song. We're still, don't worry, Pastor Brandon's back. We're still in the sermon series. We're still in the psalm. We got a lot, we got a lot of psalms to go to. So I don't know if we're going to go through the whole thing, the whole thing. <laughs> uh, but my mind, I've, I've been enjoying these, going through each, the psalms. I've skipped a couple. Uh, last uh, last Sunday, I think we were on Psalm 4 or 11. I was here. I, I'm going to read the New King James Version, by the way. I US, usually ESV. Um, but either version is just as good. The one you have in front of you is just as good. <laughs> so everybody, everybody go to Psalm 11. Give me an amen if you're there. Okay. And the Lord, I put my trust. How can I, you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow, bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot. Secretly at the upright in the heart. At the foundation are destroyed. What can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked, he will rain coals and fire and brimstone and burning wind. Shall be the portion of their cup, for the Lord is righteous. He loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just pray that the sermon is, is going to be bring glory to you. Lift me up as a broken and flawed vessel to declare your truths. May I do everything for your glory, not my own. In Jesus' name, amen. So, like I said earlier, we're gathered here Sunday, any other, just any given Sunday. Just like every other Sunday. For the same reasons, the past, present, and every Sunday from here on. The Sunday experience is to praise and worship our Lord Jesus. Everything we do is always about Jesus. Well, everything we should do should be about Jesus. Being a born-again believer in Jesus Christ is the unseen fabric. Unseen fabric and, and, and glue that holds us together as a church. Right now, as a family here, now and forever in glory in heaven. To be a true Christian means to follow and obey God's word. We preach and treat, teach Christ risen in a book called the Bible. The Bible, church, you know, I, I, I'll try to look for this one. I try, I try to look up silly things in the Bible that I know aren't really already there, but you know, just in case God might lead me to something that kind of might say it's there. So just for kicks, I looked up, does God have any... Um, you know, instructions on how to set off uh, fireworks, or can we set off fireworks in, in church? So I don't. There's really nothing that tells us tells us about Fourth of July and the Bible and fireworks. But there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of passages in the Bible that tell us how to be patriots. A whole lot of no Old Testament, and New Testament that says we can we can love our country as long as our country doesn't tell as long as our country doesn't try to command us to go against God, which sometimes it does. But again, there's no police officer, there's no military out there, there's no one trying to stop our church from being a, being a, being a Christ-centered church. We have that freedom. That's very, 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 very wonderful and beautiful freedom. We sometimes get told, so I mentioned, I mentioned that something about um, um, Blake Greenwood and Playing that at church, I even get told. I even got, I got told before that, that I shouldn't play Francis Key Scott at church for, because of the the nature of the song, right? And I, I don't want to go into too much detail, but we you know what usually we can figure out. Well, they're going to find something that's racist in the song. And usually they can't. If they look hard enough, you can. Because the other the truth is that if you go back to 1800s, pretty much compared to they, they, everybody was racist back then. But it doesn't mean that they're bad people. It just, it just means that was the nature of, 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 of the game back then. But if you want to look at the ugly truth, none of them slaves that were brought over would have been converted to Christianity. They're practicing voodoo over there. Now, that's not that's not my mission today. But what my mission is today is that in the grand scheme of things, the end is what we're left with. The victory is already done. So in warfare, there was a, I watched a German, a German, uh, it was a German, German officer telling, 
He wasn't in the SS. He wasn't in the death squad, but he was just a soldier. Had no choice. He had to fight, you know, in the, on the, uh, for, for Germany during World War II. And he said, well, and it, it was kind of a cold statement. He said, but all the things that there was, all the atrocities that we did, all, everything that was committed in the war wouldn't have mattered if we had won, if we were pushing for victory. Good thing they didn't win. But what I'm saying is that the victory is already won. And I'm not saying what we do on earth doesn't matter. But what I'm saying is that we are living in complete freedom and physical liberty as spiritual citizens of the USA with the idea of the, and the notion and the knowledge that we've already won, and that Jesus Christ is already victorious. So whatever happens to us on earth, in a sense, should not affect us because of the victory that we have before us. Now, Francis T. Scott, let me get back to Francis T. Scott. The, Francis T. Scott wrote the Star Spangled Banner, by the way, the one that I performed. And as, as, as citizens of the United States, we don't, get to, we don't even get to hear the, the song. I don't know if you all know that. When you hear the, the, the song performed at football games and you hear the song performed at, you know, on TV, they only play the, what, what is that, the first, the first, the first, what, four verses of the song, okay, right? That's not the song. As a matter of fact, I think it was a letter and a poem that he wrote to his, his mom. Francis Key Scott, when he was a lawyer, he was, the British put him in prison. I could get the story wrong, but if they put him in prison just for a little bit because he had knowledge of, of our soldiers, right, during the American Revolution. So, not 1812, it's 1812. So they didn't want Francis Key Scott to, to leak out their position or something like that. Anyways, he wrote the song Watching Battle. He watching watching America battle against England. And during the song he wrote he wrote he wrote the experiences of the war. And the whole song out of everything, the best part is what he says at the end. And I'm gonna put that up there in a little bit, but that's where we get the words in God we trust. And so culture and, and scholars have broken the song into pieces, and they said, well, because Francis C. Scott, he talks about freedmen and slaves fighting against each other. He mentioned slaves. Quite frankly, we just don't we don't know. We don't know what Francis C. Scott really thought about slavery. But there's nothing in that letter that really tells us that he was that, that, that tells us that, that his letter was a hate. Everything, everything that I that I. I've read about it. Says it was it was it was what he experienced. He was talking about the freedmen. He's talking about the free the free slaves who were fighting for our country. And there was other there was other slaves that were fighting for Britain. But let me tell you, when the British when the British mounted the, the British mounted those slaves to fight, they mounted them just like just like Stalin did, just like Stalin got people to attack those. He did it with vengeance. He said, "We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna mount you up." We want you to go ahead and go go vengeance, go get your um, the ones that enslaved you. The free men fought because they had the notion of of being free, first of all, which I don't blame them. And the idea of an American nation equal for all men and women, perhaps. But I guess it doesn't matter what Francis Key Scott thinks about this, what I think about this, what. Someone who has a lot of fancy degrees thinks about all this. Someone who's smarter than me. Doesn't matter. I don't care. What matters is what God thinks about us. What God thinks about his country. God tells us to honor him by, by showing patriotic support to whatever banner or nation we are under. Simply, we are living in complete freedom, liberty, and physically and spiritually. We are, very, we are patriotic in every sense. And we still are, but I, I, I think we all know that as a nation, we've become very lost <laughs> from what that means, man. We don't even, even the ones, even, and I, I'm going to pick on us because I, I fall in the category of conservative redneck. We don't even know what that means. <laughs> I got so many redneck friends that they, I have some friends that are, that are, they're, they're they're a little bit, let's call them a little bit worldly. They're my NASCAR friends. And they're talking, they're, they're talking about going to civil war. <laughs> Dude, you can't even lean down to, to tie your boot. <laughs> you're so, you're so overweight. You know, I mean, this is, you know, and it's like, you think, you think that, you think that patriotism is, 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 is 
listening to a Leonard Skinner song and drinking a Bush beer and waving an American flag and sitting on your butt. No. It's something much deeper than that. It is something that, that, that is spiritual. It was a nation that was founded on godly principles. It was a nation of pioneers. It was a nation of people that were persecuted in, it. in Europe. It was a nation of people who took the chance, took the risk, who died on the way over here, who made a country that was founded in God. Now, not all of them are godly, but that's what, that's what, that's what it was. That was the very notion of, of, of our Declaration of Independence. Was in God we trust. We are centered on Christ, most importantly, and what the Bible says about patriotism. It's God-inspired. Patriotism is God-inspired and God-directed to love our country, to celebrate its red, white, and blue. The colors of red, white, and blue are very symbolic, by the way, if you don't know this. I know a lot of y'all do, y'all are smart. Especially Sister Charlotte. Sister Charlotte already knows everything I'm about to say. So does, so does Brother Mike. But that's okay. I learn I'm this is stuff I just learned by the way. I'm always learning. I'm always I'm always learning. So you know the um the color of the flag, the red the red symbolizes hardness and valor. The white symbolizes purity and innocence. The blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Now I really started thinking about that. I said I started thinking about the red, line, and blue. What does what does that mean? And I started thinking, I started thinking, dang. There's actually a lot of flags that are red, white, and blue. <laughs> and there's a lot of a lot of flags that we were under that were red, white, and blue. Wait a minute, the British flag was red, white, and blue. We were under the British for a while. Texas flag, when it became a Republican, and it still is red, white, and blue. The official flag of the United States is red, white, and blue. The Confederate flag was red, white, and blue. This Christian flag, our Christian flags, red, white, and blue. The Indian nations, all right, now get this, this is great. The Indian nations, like the Choctaw Nation, who fought for the Confederacy against the United States, red, white, and blue. I have that flag, by the way, because it's a really cool flag. I want to put that up in my garage. There are a lot of flags that are red, white, and blue, but guess what? Guess what, church? The French flag, red, white, and blue. I don't know if I really care much about that one, but God bless the French, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if y'all know this. France is falling. If y'all see the news, France is falling. France is, is burned, burned, burned in the ground. It's falling apart. So my point is, all those flags and nations that are red, white, and blue, they might rise. All of them fall in the end. They're all going to fall. They can remain longer than some, but they all fall. Now let's do a wild notion. Y'all want to do? Y'all want to do a little experiment with me? A little, little, little make believe. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that as a yes. Now let's pretend we're at let's pretend we're Bethel Baptist Church in 1840. Oh, that would be horribly bad because the AC wouldn't be a problem because their AC wouldn't be invented anymore. <laughs> but we wouldn't know any better. It's 1840s. We're in Texas, you know, a little maybe maybe a little bit of northern Texas. I don't know if it's technically the United States or part of a Republic of Texas, but we're in Texas, 1840. There, there's Baptist churches in 1840, by the way. We, as a, we, we, we are citizens of the Republic of Texas. We just, we just became a new country, right? What would happen, you know, down the line? Well, our republic would join this larger nation, this new, the United States Union. But then in a 15 year years so, so later, a lot of y'all been with Bethel. Y'all been, how long, how long you been at Bethel, Robert? Well, Bob, Robert Robert, if he was at Bethel in 1840, he would experience the whole thing. It was Lucy, Kay, everybody. So, 15 years or so later, we would become a part of this Confederate thing, right? We wouldn't, we wouldn't be happy with the Union. We're going to get away from it. We see our people die and fight in a war, a nasty, bloody, horrible war. And I'm sure we'd be stubborn. There'd be some stubborn churches. I don't know if we'd be one. Let's say we weren't too stubborn, but some of our, let's say, I'm picking on Steve Central Bad. They're stubborn, right? They didn't want to take down that Confederate flag. Well, we had to take down our Confederate flags. That's, that's what would happen. We were a church. We'd have to fly a Confederate, we'd fly a Confederate flag on a Confederate banner. Then our Confederacy would be lost. Put back up the right flag, American flag, that beautiful American flag, by the way. And I don't support the Confederacy in any way. But that would be the that would be the that would be the reality of what would happen. And I know there'd be some Southern churches, they wouldn't want to take down that Confederate flag. 
Then we had the horror, the horror, the horrors of the, of the civil rights, which I won't I'll get into. But let's just say, let's just say we followed and simply obeyed God's word. We just put that flag up, and we'd be under God's, we'd be under God's control. Remember that we're under God's banner. It's just a flag at the end of the day. You know, I think it's funny about flags. You know, flags they they, they flags themselves physically they they fade and they tear away, right? When I worked at the bank, I was a bank manager. That American flag was a pain in the butt because I was the only man at the bank, right? I was I was around a bunch of girls. And Lucy knows about banking, and uh, I was, but young girls they were they were they were they were they were they were seasoned like like some some like we had Lucy Burns, but she went at my bank. And uh, these young girls they didn't know how to do anything or wouldn't do anything. The guys I would get were usually a little bit that way, and they're good guys, you know, feminine. Um, let's just leave it at that. So everything they had to do with the, the, that flag, I always have to because if I if in Portland, Texas, they can see that flag on the freeway. I get calls. Are you the manager of that bank? That flag looks horrible. I go say, oh man, that flag is. It would just be like I just put a new one out there. And just the wind just tore it up, and it's always like, and I fly it, I fly it. Oh man! And I, I, then, then I, I, one time, this is how stubborn I was. The the, uh, the bank had sent me a brand new American flag, and, and the girls kept saying, uh, "Why'd you put the flag up, Brandon? Why'd you put the?" I said, "I don't want to put it up because the put it up, the flag won't get faded again. They're gonna start messing with me." And then uh, I just no one said anything. I didn't get any calls, and then finally I got a call from the from the vice president that said. Where's that flag, Brandon? I haven't seen that flag. I got it back there. I don't put it up because it's going to fade out. They all fade out. And even if you get, now think about this church. Even if you, even if you have, you can take a flag, you can preserve it in your glass, you can preserve it in your case. But every time that's done, that's done for someone who's dead. Every time that flag's in a case and it's preserved, it's done because someone is already dead and gone. Those three colors, red, white, and blue, man. Three colors aren't as important as the three. As the three, you all know what other three? Do you all know the other three I'm talking about? Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those colors don't fade. They ain't colors. That's the Father, that's the Son, and one. That is who has made everything that's possible. That is the the Creator of all things. He's Creator of that flag that fades away. He's the one that decides whether that flag comes or goes. He's the one that decides where the wind blows. He's the one that decides anything in life. The devil can't even make a move without God. God is in control. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We sing praise forever to Jesus Christ. That is the spiritual star-spangled banner of everlasting joy. We are to love this great nation that God gave us and told us it's okay to love the USA. Don't let everybody tell you that. This is not just our country, this is everybody's country who respects it and lives here. And I guess if they are a citizen, they have, they have the right to, to disrespect it, but that's to me, that's not cool. But we are in a, in a, in a free country. We have to have that freedom. We're so very blessed. You know, we're so very blessed. We know our people are, are, are they're turning to evil things. We know that. We know that. I know I, know I, I turn the news sometimes and, and I, I I did. I, 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 sometimes I don't want to. Kay knows I preach controversial. And maybe this might be a little controversial, but I'm just going to tell you from the heart is that sometimes when I, I think when Carl, Carl and I'm not speaking for Carl, but when Carl and I played that Lee Greenwood song last time, I don't think I was doing it for the right reasons. You know, so that every time we play a patriotic song, it needs to be done for the right reasons. For Jesus. See, I, I was watching everything go down in 2020. I was seeing the you know, the burning buildings and I was seeing the our even even the, the our, our publication, the Baptist Standard, it, it talks bad about us. Those who actually are, are and we ain't better than nobody else. But those who all we do is all we do is preach the true word of God. That's what we do. But because it doesn't mix well with the culture, they say, well, this is a conservative redneck thing. And all that's the word. But but I've seen everything go down in 2020. And I said, you know what? That's it. They're, they're, I, I take I take things the wrong way. They're messing with us. <laughs> They're messing with my grandmas and grandpas. They're calling us names and stuff like that. So I'm going to crank this song up because they said I can't crank it up. That's not why we do it. We do it because we're free in Jesus Christ. And so we can take we can take things and do it the wrong way. But I want us to. The mindset shouldn't be the things around us are, are, are horrible and they're changing for the worst. That's how many find ourselves. We find ourselves that there's no solution 
You know, an individual can live our, we can live our life in complete failure. Let's say an individual lived a life, hopeless life. Like that's how we are at the world. The world, the world's mean and wicked, right? We can look at somebody. I, I've seen people look at someone who has died, who lived a life, and they're looking at it from a worldly scale, right? That man didn't achieve anything in life. He didn't have a successful job. He didn't have a wife. He didn't have you know, whatever, whatever cliche it might be. He didn't have a marriage. He failed at school. He got kicked out. This person was, a, you know, this and that. The world's hateful. Loser, lose this and this. If that individual failed at all those things in the world, but found Jesus Christ, they are as successful and everlasting and just very blessed person. It's all about Jesus. Because in the end, in the end, all these things that we have, the body goes. I try to keep my body in shape. I saw Sister Sister Kay's, you know, her son out there. He's well, he's a, I can't keep up with him, but he's a Navy SEAL. Oh, I'm gonna start keeping in shape. <laughs> so I try to keep up with it. Hey, oh, you can work out. We keep, but we all get older. Body goes. We can make so much money, make all these things, make a house, all that stuff. Nothing wrong with that. God said you can't. God God doesn't say you can't have all that. But God tells us, and the life tells us, and God has made it where all we have in the end is the soul and the spirit together, where it goes. The decisions that we make with the soul and the spirit, the choices that we live in the heart of the spirit, not the physical heart, the cardia, the ancient Greek, the agape love, love of Jesus Christ and where it flows and where it goes. That's what we have in the end. I think when we truly realize that, and I mean, me as a believer, I'm still learning, y'all. I think I'm now just grasping what we have, what we have in the soul and the spirit. What we have is, 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 is that's, that's what we have in the end. That, and that's where, that's, that, that's really all that matters. Is where that goes and how how we how we operate. And the only way we can do that is through Jesus Christ. So that's not hard. That's easy. When you break it down to the simplicity of of of, of faith and salvation and, and all the all the breakdowns you want to give it. It's always Jesus. It's always Jesus and how we stand with him and how we are with him and how we see Jesus. And I want to close on this. I want to close on this. I want to show y'all why the Star Trek Banner is an awesome song. Not because, I don't know, I think it's a great thing. it really well. Because of these words. It says, oh, thus be it when a free man shall stand between their love home and the war's desolation. Blessed the victory and peace may the heavens rescued and praised the power that hath made and preserved us a nation. The conqueror must win our cause. It is just. And this be our motto. This is the, this is what makes the Star Spangled Banner here, y'all. <laughs> In God we trust. The Star Spangled Banner in triumph shall waver the land and the free and the home of the brave. Let us pray. And we, Father, we thank you for this free nation we live in. We thank you for those who have who have given their lives. We thank you for those who are currently protecting us. We thank you for our 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 strength as a union. All this is yours. All this is yours, Lord. We give everything to you. Command us, direct us, use us, and guide us. May we be may we be may we be the vessel you use. To keep this nation free, to keep this nation godly, to keep this nation Christ-centered. Use us, Lord. We 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 pray that you use us to every last drop, like a good cup of coffee, like a good cup of tea, whatever whatever we enjoy here on earth. We can put it to a physical sense, but our body is 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 like that cup. It's it's like drinking a good beverage. That beverage will only last for so long. 
You can't you can't make it. You can put it in the refrigerator. It don't taste as good, but either way, it's going to it's going to it's going to be gone. But we don't want to be wasting that beverage. We want we want our body, soul, spirit, maybe everything to be used. For your glory. And let us not waste a single single drop. Of this blessing called life that you've given us in Jesus name. Amen. I dare not end a sermon without offering a lifeline. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please make a profession of faith today. And now, even if you've already made made a commitment, if you know Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, I see some folks that they want to they want to make a recommitment. They want to they want to they want to come up and they want to do that again. That's always possible. That's always possible. If you want to get rebaptized and, and, and go through the whole process again, that we don't have a problem doing that. It brings glory and honor to Jesus Christ. It's always about Jesus. If you need special prayer, please come up. If you want to get questions about this church, you have questions about becoming a member, you can also do that too as well. Please pump your questions in on the on the online too as well. Please come up. Thank you. Let's stand and pray for it here. I know I just restarted the feed. I don't know if there's anybody else needs a prayer request. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'll go ahead and close this. I'll do closing prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just want to just ask that you bless us and lift us up. Grant us traveling mercies. Uh, again, I want to remember Charles Fake, our pastor emeritus. Um, we just want to lift him up and uh, bless those that are that are traveling. Thank you for Brother Jesse being here. I pray for the, uh, the Jesse's family. I pray for Brother Earl who's not here. I want to lift up Brother Carl too as well. Brother Carl hadn't been here. I know he's he's not feeling well. We'll lift him and Lily up uh, too as well. And we want to bless them and guide them. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.